Hello there guys and welcome to this Skillshare slash YouTube video depending on where you're watching this. In this kind of course we're going to be going through some of the basics of squash, shorts, rolls, etc, etc and just in general why this uh, sport is uh, a lot more interesting than I think a lot of people think it is. There's a lot of strategy, geometry and skill to it that I think a lot of people aren't aware of. So if you want to learn how to play squash, if you're just a newcomer or if, even if you've you know, played a little bit you might be able to pick up some tips here. I'm not an expert but at the same time the reason that I made this is because I haven't actually seen there's many uh, you know, good videos on, online about this. So uh, I thought, you know, let's contribute and let's make some videos. I know what I'm talking about. I'm just not an expert, so that's a little disclaimer there. Point being, we're going to talk about rules, skills, different types of shots, and um, it's going to be good. So, uh, you know, stick around and have some fun. Okay guys, so basically the first kind of video we're going to be doing is uh, the lines. So the lines are, as you can see, there's a lot of red lines and we need to explain kind of like what exactly they're doing. So this top line here and this bottom line here, um, these both signify that the, uh, the ball is out. So if I was to, for example, hit the ball down here, that's out. That's, the ball is dead and that's the end of the game. Same goes for up here. If that goes up here or if it goes onto the ceiling, it's out. Whereas the, uh, this middle line here is the service line. So when you serve, and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll talk about that later, when you serve, the ball needs to be hit above that middle line. Like so. So these lines here are also, and you can see, if we just zoom all the way around, there are lines going all the way around the court. And they're red, right? If the ball, unlike tennis, hits any of these lines at any point, that's the end of the game. So for example, in tennis, in tennis, uh, if a ball touches a line, it's still in, right? So let's say, for example, in tennis, the ball was to hit this line. In tennis, that would still be in. In squash, it's out. So if that's out, if it touches any of these lines, it's out, okay? So um, this here, this line here, this, you see this miniature square that I'm standing on, is the uh, is this is the service kind of box so you need to be standing in this box to serve and uh, you need to serve in to this huge quarter and it's just vice versa if you're if you're serving from this side it needs to also apply this way and we'll talk about serves later on of course but um, this this is kind of basics of the lines and uh, there's also a line at the back here if it touches the ceiling it's out if it touches anything within you know what we've talked about it's out, okay? So uh, yeah, thank you guys for talking about the lines. So guys, uh, obviously the first thing you wanna be doing is warming up the ball. And if you don't understand why would I warm up a ball, you know, how do you warm up a ball? Squash balls, unlike tennis balls, are made of rubber, which obviously means that they can get hot. And a normal squash ball, before it gets um, hot, will just die if you drop it. That's a cold ball. You can't play with that. You want to make sure it's nice and warm. You can do this in a number of different ways. You can either just drive it straight down the line and keep hitting it and hitting it and hitting it. Obviously, that's a lot of friction. It's going to make it hotter. Or you can drop it on the floor and just um, to save time, you can go like this to the ball and that will uh, provide a lot of friction and it will heat the ball up. A lot of people don't like doing this because uh, apparently it destroys the ball or something, but I've never had that experience in my time. And uh, at the end of the day, if you're just playing, you don't, it doesn't matter that much. But um, obviously you do this for a little bit, it will probably take a few minutes to heat the ball up, but once you get a really nice and bouncy ball, you can obviously do a lot with it and it's gonna be very nice and uh, bouncy. For example, something like that is uh, obviously much more um, effective when you're actually playing squash. So make sure you warm the ball up and make sure also there is a double yellow ball. This is a tournament standard grade ball um, you can use a blue ball if you want to train, but make sure if you're actually playing any games or you're trying to learn the sport properly, it's a double yellow squash ball. So, um, yeah. So guys, now you've learned how to warm the ball up, you want to be uh, actually learning how to hold the racket because that's a very important part of the game, obviously. I like to hold my racket with a slightly closed face. I mean, this isn't really how you're supposed to hold it, but I find it's very comfortable like this. You want to have a closed face like so, so that when you approach the ball, you can come into the ball with your racket exactly parallel with the front wall. See, that makes sense? So you hit the ball, it's going to be nice and parallel, right? Whereas if you have an open face and you hit the ball like this, I'm not a fan of that because you're just going straight up into the air. Closed face, 
see that? You see how that's going to go straight in? If I can show you for an example here. I'd say that's a pretty perfect shot, to be honest. That was, I'm very happy with that. At the end of the day, when you're doing a drive, and we'll talk about this in a minute, you want to try and get the ball to die right here, dead. You want it to die. So you want it to hit this wall and then this wall almost straight away, because then it's just going to roll, OK? And um, yeah, that's really great. That's called a rolling nick, where it just hits a corner and it just rolls across the floor and it's dead. So you want to make sure you're trying to do that kind of thing. As I say, if you, if you approach it like this, you're going to go straight up into the air. It's not ideal. So uh, when, you, when you're hitting the ball, just for footwork and etc., for a forehand, if you're right-handed, you want to approach it with your left foot and you want to swipe down here. I'm actually a little bit too far away, but you want to swipe down here, okay? This is obviously going to give you maximum power, a lot of rotational power. So, you know, in real time, you want to go like that. That's going to go straight down the line and die. It's going to be a rolling nick. It's going to be fantastic. With a backhand, you want to do a very similar thing. So you want to approach it with your right foot, obviously, because it's the opposite, and you want to go like that, you know? And if we can get a little bit closer, we can go like that. If you touch the wall, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, if you're playing pro, a lot of people are going to go, the ball is going to come straight down. Obviously, we've got a tripod there. That doesn't exist in the real game. We've got, it's going to come straight down. If you skim the wall, it doesn't matter because the wall is going to be literally tight here. So skim the wall, doesn't matter. Just be careful of your racket and that it doesn't get destroyed. So now we're going to move on to serves. So guys, uh, now that you've learned how to hit the ball properly uh, in a kind of straight drive, we'll get to that later, of course, you want to know how to obviously start off the point. That's going to use a serve. So, you know, like tennis, you do serve in squash. There are two different ways that you can serve, um, really. Actually, there's, I guess there's three. A lot of people, for example, will like to serve like this. So they're going to approach with their left foot or, you know, maybe even their right foot. A lot of it is personal preference for the most part. And you're going to backhand the ball. The idea is you have to have one foot in this box here, as you can see. If you're serving from this side, you also want to have one foot in this box. Your point, if you, if you have two, that's, that's completely legal. This isn't. Is, isn't, is, isn't, is, right? So basically, as long as you've got one foot in the box that you're serving from, you're good, you're fine. But uh, two, two is fine as well. So we're going to go back to here. When you serve, you want to hit above that middle service line that we talked about earlier. It needs to go above there and land in, this, in, in the opposite quarter. So as you can see, this is a quarter of the whole court. You can see this here. And obviously, this is also a quarter of the whole court. If I was to serve, I'll do a little demonstration now. As you can see, the ball has landed in this quarter, in any of this area. So that's a legal serve. That's very good. If you serve and it goes below that service line, it's an illegal serve. If you serve and it goes above the service line, but it doesn't, it's full short, for example, that was in actually, but, but if you serve above this line, and for example, it lands here, illegal serve, you've just lost the point. There are no second serves in squash whatsoever. If you serve and miss, that's the end. The, in tennis, is actually quite rare. It's one of the only racket sports where you do get a second serve. If you mess up the serve, you've lost the point. That's it, nada, you get nothing. So serving's great. There's three, as I was talking about, there's three different types of serves. For example, the first type of serve is like so. Very simple. Um, it allows you, what it allows you to do is it allows you to approach and then now you're in. We'll talk about this, this area is called the T and we'll get to that later. But what it allows you to do is it allows you to just enter the game. You boom, you're now standing exactly in the middle of the court. You're in the best possible position. You can do whatever you want. Whereas the serve that I like to do is a tennis uh, serve. So as you can see, when I was doing this one, this kind of thing, this is not a very tennisy serve. But this is, you know, my serve of choice is a kind of smash. As you can see, it's overarm. You're very much allowed to do that. I find it highly effective. I think that's the best kind of possible thing. On this side, you can do a forehand serve like so. That's perfect, because you can also approach this. You're in the middle of the court. You're, you've, you know, as I say, you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing. You're absolutely fine. They're basically the main types of serves. And also, on this side, you can serve this kind of thing. You know, that's fine as well. Um, 
but the most important thing is you cannot jump while you're serving. If you go like, for example, and it's gonna look really stupid without a ball, if you go like this and you go, illegal serve, because you weren't touching this box when you served. When you made contact with that ball, you weren't touching it, so that's an illegal serve. You have to keep one foot on the ground. So when you serve, you wanna keep one foot on the ground in this box at all times. So now we're gonna move on to uh, some straight drives, which are uh, pretty cool. So guys, the most common shot you wanna be playing is a drive. There's a forehand drive and a backhand drive. Obviously, if you're left-handed, it's kind of the other way around, because obviously if you're left-handed, the forehand drive, or the backhand drive is on the forehand. So this is a left-handed uh, backhand drive. So normally, if you're right-handed, you wanna be driving with obviously the racket in your dominant hand. You wanna lead with your left foot. This obviously creates a level of stabilization. You've got your back right foot here, and you've got your back left arm here. You've now got this kind of like shape that you're making. Very good balance, allows you to rotate a lot and get a lot of kind of internal abdominal power involved. And all you wanna be doing is a simple shot. You're gonna be aiming just on this kind of, you can just see here, you wanna just be aiming in this kind of region, this kind of thing. Uh, it doesn't matter too much and it depends exactly what you're trying to do. If you wanna do a kill shot and you can just, if you just focus on there while I do this, you can, um, for example, you can just go like that. As you can see, that's very low, whereas, that's quite high. It all depends on what exactly you're trying to do and the positioning of your opponent, which we will talk about later. Point being, if you want to do a drive, it's very simple. All you want to be doing is you want to make it cling to the side. Because obviously, if you've got a ball rolling down the side wall, it's really, really difficult to return because you've got to try and position yourself. And as you can see, you're not going to get the strings on it properly. So it's very hard to return a ball that's clinging to the side wall and that's gonna die in this corner. It's very, very hard, which is good for you because if you can do it, you're very likely to win. So all you wanna be doing is coming in. It wasn't ideal, that one, but. As close as you can get to the side wall is ideal. And if we go onto the backhand side now, we can just see um, that, for example, let's just do a backhand. These are um, the same rules. So you wanna make it cling and it's gonna be great. So that's a forehand and a backhand drive. Probably one of the most common shots in the entire game. Most of the time it's backhand actually. So um, because obviously, I mean, if you, if you go online now, you can watch some rallies and stuff of you know, proper pros playing. I'd say a good 50% of every shot played is a backhand drive. They just do backhand drive, swap out, backhand drive, swap out. The occasional just cross court drive, which we can talk about in the next one. but. Most of the time, it will be a backhand drive. So it's very important that you understand how to do this. You wanna lead with your right leg, boom, go across. So for example, we'll just do this one more time. There you go, and that's a very good shot, you yeah? And I mean, the ball's quite cold at the moment because obviously we're not playing, but that's the kind of idea you wanna be doing. Okay guys, so another thing that you wanna make sure that you know about in squash is the T. So obviously the T, is known as a T because it resembles a T shape as you can see here on the floor. The T is important because it's the very center almost of the squash court, which means that you're a pretty much equal distance away from everything. Well, as much of an equal distance as you can get. Obviously the corners are, because it's a, it's a kind of rectangle square shape, the corners are a little bit further away, but basically the T is the ideal place to be standing at all times. And this is just simply down to, uh, obviously, the fact that if you're standing here, you can retrieve any balls. So for example, say there's a ball here, you go like this, you retrieve the ball, you go straight back to the tee, you return. Same thing on this side, you go like this, take the ball, you go straight back. If you're here, by definition, physics, etc., your opponent is also not in the same place as you, that your opponent is not on the tee, therefore your opponent is out of position, which is good for you. Because if you're standing here, your opponent might be standing here, for example. If your opponent's standing here, where do you hit the ball? Straight down that line. Your opponent then has to run a greater distance, which of course 
is going to exhaust your opponent much more. And at the same time, the T is an important place to stand. It's also important to know that it's a good idea to try to exhaust your opponent. The more you make them run, the better. If you can remain here for the entire game, Obviously, this is a very rare occurrence because you will be repositioned and depositioned examples. But if you can remain here for as long as possible, that you'll have to do minimal running and you'll you know, preserve your energy. So make sure you're always returning to the tee. After every single shot you play, you want to return to the tee, which is the optimal place to stand. So guys, another very important uh, shot that you want to integrate into your game in squash is the drop shot. And the drop shot is very simple, it's just simply uh, just something along the lines of that. You can either hit the side wall first or you can hit the front wall, you can hit the front wall like that. That's the ideal kind of thing, right? Obviously, um, you can play a drop shot technically from any part of the court. You could play one from the back if you're accurate enough, you the middle, whatever. But ideally, the best place to play a drop shot because you can get the most amount of precision is as close to the wall as possible, really, because obviously it's a lot more accurate. The closer you get, the more accurate you can be, basically. Why would you want to use a drop shot? Let's say your opponent, when we're talking about positioning, let's say your opponent was either on this corner, that corner, or that corner. If I'm here, for example, and the ball dies over there, I'm not going to get to it. If I'm there or there, exact same thing. If I'm there and I want to play a backhand drop shot, just like that, it's absolutely fine. Point being, drop shots are very simple. How would you play a drop shot? Basically like a drive, but very soft. You want to lead with your right foot like so, and you want to come under the ball and almost push it up like, like that. That was a very good drop shot, I think. So uh, it, the exact same thing goes for the backhand as well. So you want to come in like this, and you just want to hit the ball into that corner. It's that simple, very effective. It's going to make your opponent run. It's going to exhaust your opponent. I think it's a great shot. Just make sure you use it conservatively because obviously the only problem with a drop shot is if, you, if your opponent can get to it, let's say your opponent is standing here and your opponent's got to it, you're, you're in danger because your opponent can do basically anything. Your opponent can do another drop shot to confuse you. Your opponent can go across. Your opponent can lob to any part of the court. They can drive it with either a four, with either a forehand straight drive or a cross court drive. Possibilities are endless. You will be in grave danger if your opponent can return your drop shot. So you want to, and you know, confidently return it. I'm not talking about like, like scraping it. I'm talking if your opponent can get to it in time, you're in grave danger. So only use a drop shot when you're very confident that you can, you know, you can do some damage to your opponent. But they're the basics of drop shots. So guys, another very good shot you can do is a volley. Now, a volley is simply where you take the ball um, before it bounces. You can use this for a number of different ways. We were talking about, I believe we were talking about, um, you know, if the ball was, for example, going to land like this and then just roll across the ground, that's not good. You can't return that. If someone serves, and you think the ball is going to do the exact same thing, it's going to do a rolling nick in here, and you're not going to be able to return it out of that corner, you're in danger. So what you want to do is you want to volley the ball either for a serve or just to eliminate a certain amount of time for your opponent. A lot of the time, your opponent, if they're struggling, will do a high shot to give the ball a lot of time to then come all the way up and all the way down. What that's going to do is allow them time to return to their position if they're struggling. What you want to do is you want to take some time off them and you want to put them under immense pressure and make them have to work harder. So for example, let's say you've got a, you know, someone, they're in this corner, they're really struggling to return, they do a really wide kind of lob shot, which we'll talk about later, and um, instead of waiting for it and waiting for it to bounce and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and then hitting it, your opponent's now completely viable to go and hit that. Whereas, if they did the same thing, so they hit the ball, for example, up like this, and you just go like that, that's basically given them no time to recover. That's a great shot. I mean, it wasn't ideal because obviously I just returned it to them. You don't want to do that. You don't want to obviously return a ball to someone. But if the ball's coming up like so, and you just go something like that, that will be really helpful at putting your opponent out of position, not giving them enough time, and all of these kinds of things. So yeah, always use volleys if you're concerned that a ball is going to die in a corner like this. 
because you can't return that. So always take it early if you feel that you need to. You can do this in serves or just a rally, whatever you think is better, but don't be afraid to volley. So guys, another really, really good shot you can do is a lob. Now, why would you use a lob? Let's say your opponent is standing here, for example. They've just done a drop shot, so you've, you've run to it, you've recovered it. Maybe they've been, you've recovered it as another drop shot, as we talked about earlier. Your opponent's now run to it, oh, they do another drop shot. What you could then do, instead of doing another and another and another, if your opponent's at the front and you want it to go to the back, and you don't want to risk driving it, because obviously, let's say you drive it, let's say you drive it to the back. If your opponent's standing here, they're gonna to get to a drive, aren't they? They're gonna to get to that. But if you can lob the ball so it goes all the way over them, they won't get to it. For, so for example, they've just done a drop shot, and instead of going like, you can lob it over their heads. They won't get to that and the ball will die in that corner, which is really great. So you can obviously do this with a backhand as well. You can basically just come in, nice wide stance, like a forehand or a backhand, like we were talking about earlier, like a drive, but you just want to come in under and you want to scoop up. You want to go up on the ball, it's going to hit it's going to off here, and it's going to go all the way into that corner. And the great thing about it is because it's got a lot of downward power, it's not actually going to bounce off that back wall so, um, so that your opponent will be able to just return it off the back wall. It's going to go hit the back wall and die and lose all of its energy, which is really good, really good placement. So always use a lob if um, you want to try and, you know, subvert a kind of uh, your opponent. So guys, another really, really good shot you can use, normally use this defensively, of course, is the boast. Now, an aggressive boast, we can talk about earlier, is a trickle boast. You can use that as well, we'll get to that earlier. But the premise of a boast is to basically, instead of hitting the ball straight down a drive, like that, where it's gonna come straight back to you, a drive requires you to be very side positioned and you have a lot of room, right? So you just drive it like so. If the ball, comes on this, uh, down onto this uh, wall, bounces off the wall, and you're kind of having to retreat, you might not necessarily be able to drive the ball and go straight forward. You might have to use a boast. So what you want to do is you want to hit the ball into this wall, and it's going to go into that corner. Use it defensively uh, if you're at the back of the court. So for, I'll, I'll give a demonstration here. So this is a boast. So all, it, all that happens, is it goes off this wall, and if you can just, if you just film that bit, I'll just show you the kind of results of it. So it's gonna go off the wall and that kind of thing. And again, you wanna use this defensively, of course, but I think instead of going like that, you can kind of do a, a, a boast, which a, a boast is a really good thing. And it's the same on the backhand. If I just come over to the backhand side, for example, um, the, it's the same idea. You wanna hit off this wall, and you wanna go over to there, that's a boast. So guys, another really, really good shot you can use is another kind of boast. It's called a trickle boast, and it's an aggressive uh, use of the boast. So as we were talking about earlier in just the last one, a boast is where it comes off the wall. It can either be this or that wall, and then obviously it has to hit the front wall. So it's gonna then hit the front wall, and it's probably gonna die there or whatever. The only issue, and this is with a drop shot, the issue with a drop shot is that your opponent can usually anticipate you doing a drop shot because they can see you, your racket is approaching the ball very softly. So they can see, okay, he's gonna do a drop shot, I'll run to the front so I can receive the drop shot. Makes sense, right? A trickle boast is a kind of dummy, yeah, I'd say a dummy drop shot. So it's gonna, you're gonna approach it looking like you're absolutely about to smash it. So your opponent is going, okay, he's gonna smash that. I'm gonna run to the back of the court so I can get ready to, you know, I can prepare for that. But what you're actually gonna do, instead of smashing it to the back, you're gonna kind of just drop the ball in that corner. So this is very simple, and you're gonna smash the ball, but it's gonna end up very soft. Observe. You see? That was kind of a drop shot in that corner, but I smashed it. And what it does is it means that your opponent's gonna to run to the back. Oh my God, he's just, run, he's just gonna smash it. I'm gonna run all the way back here and the ball dies in that corner. Very clever shot, very good, very easy to master actually, and um, it almost always tricks your opponent, which is very cool. 
Okay, guys. So a lot of you know what a lot of people are probably wondering is, okay, that all, you know all of these skills are all well and good, but you know how do I return a ball off the back wall? If the ball goes like this, how am I supposed to return that? Well, I'll show you. You could use a boast as well, by the way. So let's say the ball goes off the back wall. So your, your opponent just smashed it. It's gone into the back wall. Maybe it was a serve. Maybe it was just a cross court. Maybe it was a straight drive, whatever. The ball's gone into this corner. Something like that. So let's try that again. You want to... Ball's gone into this corner. Like that. You want to lead with your left foot this time. And you kind of want to angle it towards this corner. This corner here is going to be in line with your foot, right? And obviously, give yourself space. You don't, want to be, you don't want to be too close to it, otherwise you're not going to be able to make any full range of motion. And you just want to go... Really... That was beautiful. Really twist your body around to uh, account for the straight drive. Because otherwise, if you go like this and you just hit the ball, it's going to hit this and it's just going to go over there. It's not... The angle is too sharp for a boast. I'll show you. Obviously, that's not going to do anything. So, always make sure when you're using, when you're going off the back wall, um, that you're always, um, you know, being careful that you don't get too uh, too close. Also, not too far away, obviously, because you're just if you if you can't get there, you're stuck. You don't have enough time to go like this. Um, we can also talk about okay, what happens if um, the ball's ri I just cannot get my racket behind it. The ball's too close. What do I do? You can do this thing where you just hit straight off the back wall, and it goes like this. I'll show you for an example. Something like that will take the ball all the way up into the air. Take the ball all the way up into the air. You'll go, and it will uh, do a little kind of drop shot. That kind of thing. So again, this kind of thing. Absolutely beautiful, if I do say so myself. So obviously you can do, and obviously this is the same thing on the backhand. I won't show you because I don't want to waste you guys' time. But it's the exact same thing. You want to approach just like you would with any other shot. Right foot. You can do a boast. If it's too sharp, you can also do a boast. Just like so. And then you're fine. And then that's, that's pretty much everything you need to know about hitting off the back wall. Okay, guys. So now you've known pretty much every single shot that you can play, every single you know, strategy that you can implement. You just want to make sure that you're staying at it and that you're training and that you're using exercises. And you're just getting experience. You know, Always make sure you play people that are better than you because then you can understand how they are approaching different situations. A lot of squash is about endurance. You can play all of these fantastic shots really well, but if you only last for five minutes, you're not going to do well. So make sure you stay in good physical condition. And um, I mean, I, I can show you a little demonstration of just a few different shots in combination that can work very well, because you can make you know, kind of combos, combinations. So for example, let's say we do a drop shot. We do a drop shot, it goes into this corner, all well and good. Your opponent runs after it. Oh my god, he's done a drop shot. Oh my god, I'm going to hit this back like so. Okay, so now you're here. Your opponent's there. What shot would you do? Lob. I would do a lob. You can either you. There's there's all kinds of things you could do. There's no there's not one answer. You could either do a straight drive down the backhand, very effective. You can lob him, go straight back there. You can lob him straight back there. You could do a drop shot. You could trickle boast it as well. You've got to be careful. You could, um, you could do a drop shot into the same corner because if your opponent's here, they're going to make sure they want to get out of the way. So they're going to do this and they're going to run, oh my God, return to the tee. You're just going to hit in the same place. And then they've got to then completely turn around and go back. That uses a lot of energy. They have to completely stop themselves with their legs and go all the way back. So it's very, very, very helpful uh, to be able to, you know, some don't do it too many times, but sometimes play the same shot that you just did. Play the exact same shot. Not always, but yeah. You also need to look up, because this is very complicated, guys. You also need to look up on, uh, on sorry, on strokes and lets. These are kind of, uh, you know, when you redo a shot or you get like a forfeit if you accidentally hit an opponent or things like that. So we'll go through this very, very quickly, but they're quite complicated in different scenarios and most of the time if you're playing someone who knows what they're doing you know you'll 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 know 
If you hit your opponent, depending on what happens, either you or they will get a stroke. If someone gets hit, it's a stroke always. So, for example, and a stroke means your opponent gets the point. A let means you replay the point. So, say the ball has come back here, it's just been hit over here, it's gonna bounce off this wall, and it's gonna go here. If you follow the ball, and you turn your back on your opponent, and you hit the ball, they get the stroke, they get the point. But, if the ball, if you let the ball come behind you, and you don't turn your back on your opponent, and then you hit your opponent, that's actually your point. You get that, because it was their fault, and you were very observant of where they were, and they didn't get out of the way. You were playing it safe, and you knew exactly where everything was, and you've hit your opponent because they were in the way, they get the point. If you follow the ball, if, if, if you follow the ball, they get the point. If you follow them, you get the point. A let might be where someone is standing in the way of you. Say there's someone standing here, and they've just hit the ball over there, and I'm running, and I literally cannot get to the ball because they're in the way, and they're doing all of this, and then I can't get to the ball. That's a, that's a let, and you replay the point. The same person who served serves, etc., etc., etc. A few other things. When you serve, that is called a handout. If you if if you um, if you if you're serving, it's a handout. What happens is uh, then your opponent, say your opponent wins the next point, they get a handout. Uh, in English scoring, a handout simply means um, no one gets any points. So, for example, um, English scoring is where only the server can get points. So, uh, in American scoring, it's simply you've won a point, you get one point, you've won a point, you get one point. In English scoring, only the person serving gets a point. When you serve, when you get a handout, so basically when your opponent has been winning points and then you start winning points, the, f the first point that you win against your opponent, you can choose what side you serve from. So I can either serve from this side or that side. If you're right-handed and your opponent is right-handed, you always want to use your handout and start from this side because then you're serving to your opponent's backhand and they have to receive a backhand rather than a very comfortable forehand. If you serve from that side, your opponent, as long as they're right-handed, is gonna be at a massive advantage. Every single time you serve, if you win the point again after serving, you have to swap sides. So, you are, so if I serve from this side, and then I win the point, I then serve from that side. If I win the point, I serve from that side. Let's say my opponent wins a point, hand out, they can, either, they can make that decision, and they can start which one they want, if that makes sense. Guys, if you have any questions or suggestions or anything like that, please let me know and I will clear some stuff up for you. Look into lets and boasts, uh, look into different combinations, watch some matches, but guys, I really appreciate you looking at this kind of, uh, this, uh, this course on either Skillshare or YouTube, depending on where you're watching it. Um, I really hope this has helped, guys, and um, I really appreciate it. So uh, thank you, guys. Keep playing squash, keep exercising, keep doing whatever you want to do. Love squash, and uh, see you next time.